You are light. In fact, you are the light of the world. How do I know? I know because in every cell of your body is a part of the spark, the first spark of creation. Some people call it the spark of God. Other people call it the fire of existence. As for me, I don't care what you call it. As long as you know how to access that light that's within you and within all of life, that light that will not go out, that spirit that stays alive even in the darkest, most difficult, most painful and scary moments of our lives. We just have to keep in mind three things to help us to access this light. First, we have to hold fast to the beauty of this world. I mean, look at this snow coming down behind me. Look at a sunset or a sunrise. Play with an animal. Smell that smell of the neck of a baby that you're holding in your arms. Fun and laughter with friends and family. There is so much beauty in this world every day. It's up to us to find it, to pay attention to it, to appreciate it. There's a a Zen Buddhist story about a man who's running from a tiger and he runs. There's nowhere to run. So he jumps over the cliff because he doesn't want to get eaten by the tiger. But it's a huge drop down and he fortunately grabs onto a limb of a tree, and he's holding on for dear life. He looks up, he says, God, God, help me. What can I do? And then he, he waits, and he hears a voice, and the voice says, let go. And he looks down, and he looks back up. He goes, is there anyone else up there? He's hanging on for dear life. And as he's hanging on there, he doesn't want to let go. He sees in front of him some, a bush with some raspberries, beautiful, ripe, red raspberries. And so he, he, takes, he takes one and he eats it. And as he's hanging on for dear life, he eats as many raspberries as he can. And the reason that they tell this story is because all of us are suspended between our birth and our inevitable death. And while we're in this state, before us are beauty, beautiful moments, beautiful opportunities in in any given moment to be present to that beauty. And when we're present to that beauty, we can find the joy and the hope and the light of this world. As long as we have the breath of life, no matter what we're going through, there are moments of, of joy and laughter and beauty that we can touch on. I can remember going through some of the worst moments of my life. And even in those times when I wasn't even sure I wanted to continue, whether it was worth it, there were still in the midst of those connections with people or moments of beauty, maybe cuddling with a, a pet or whatever. But these moments come even in the hardest times, no matter what we're going through. Now, the second way that we can access this unquenchable light is 
to remember that we are not alone, that no matter what we're going through, someone else has walked this way before. We're told of a mother who's had a baby that died. She woke, found her baby dead and ran to the Buddha and brought this baby before the Buddha and said, Buddha, I can't, I can't live. I can't survive without my, my, my child. I need your help. I need, you need to do something to bring my child back or something to help. And the Buddha said, I can help you if you'll go and find, a, bring me a mustard seed from a home that has not experienced grief. And so she went out and she went door to door through the whole village, knocking on every door, asking, I need a mustard seed. And people, okay. And then she said, but I, I have one question. Has your household experienced grief? And of course, every house she went to see had a story of loss or death or failure or difficulty or some kind of grief. And so by the time she got through the whole village and she couldn't find a mustard seed from any house that hadn't experienced grief, because every house experiences grief, every life experiences loss. She comes back to the Buddha and she says, thank you. You have helped me. You have helped to heal me because I realize that I'm not alone, that others have experienced this kind of thing too. And I'm remembering, you know, as, as a, a parent who has lost a baby child, a three-year-old girl, I, I'm, I'm reminded that, that my wife and I in some ways are uh, a witness that you can experience the worst thing you could ever imagine and you could still live and life gets better and life goes on and you can survive it. We can survive the worst things that we can ever imagine. And that is a light of hope to know, to see others in our lives who've been through things. I remember my predecessor, Dr. John Wolf, telling me at the time that my own daughter died, he said, Mon, you look around that congregation on any Sunday morning and you'll see eight, nine, 10 couples who've lost children over the years. He said, those people give us all hope because they have walked through the valley of the shadow of death and the deepest darkness any parent can imagine. And they've lived to tell about it and they shine a great light. And he said, and you will too. And, and it'll, it, you'll be able to continue your ministry. Cause at that time I wasn't even sure what was possible, but that gave me hope and the light of hope, seeing other people knowing that others had walked this way before and live to tell about it, and their lives had gotten better. That is one of the ways that we touch into that unquenchable light is by being in community with others and knowing that we are not alone no matter what we're going through. Now, the third thing that keeps this light alive is living for more than just ourselves. Your life matters because it impacts other people's lives. At our partner school, Unity Learning Academy, there's a precious little seven-year-old girl from Honduras named Sophia. Some of you know sweet Sophia. She's just bright and she's a real joy to anybody who's met her. She walks with a crutch because she was born in Honduras with only one leg. Sophia's mother had a friend in Tulsa who invited her to come see if she might be able to find some help here in the United States for her daughter. So a single mom with a 12-year-old boy and a 7-year-old daughter made her way to the border of the United States. When they arrived, Sophia and her brother were separated from their mother and put in one of those temporary holding cages the mother, having an invitation and a sponsor, eventually made her way to Tulsa by herself because her children were nowhere to be found. And it took her four painstaking months to finally locate her children. When she did, they were in El Paso, Texas. Early on in the separation, Sophia had lost her crutch. So her brother had to carry her everywhere. He was carrying her wherever they went. This 12-year-old boy and this 7-year-old girl in a country they didn't know without their mother, not even knowing how to speak English. Now, recently upon meeting Sophia at our partner school, it occurred to 
the leaders of our Partners in Education program, that the Wayman Tisdale Foundation was set up for just this kind of a situation to provide prosthesis for people who might otherwise not be able to afford them. So with the help of Nancy McDonald, they applied so that Sophia would get a new leg. And the foundation has not only said they will provide her with a, a prosthesis leg now, but will stay with her for the rest of her life and make sure that she will have a leg and be able to stand on her own two feet for the rest of her life as she grows into adulthood. This is how we cultivate the capacity for hope is by living for more than just ourselves. The, the people in the, the Wayman Tisdale Foundation carrying on his legacy, the people in our Partners in Education program, and so many others who do things not just for themselves, but for others. And they find within themselves some of the greatest satisfaction that there is. This is how we cultivate the capacity for hope and for light in the world, by experiencing life's beauty, eating those raspberries when we can, the sunsets and the sunrises, by realizing that we're not alone, that others have walked this way before, no matter what terrible things we may be experiencing, fears, pain, and loneliness, others have been through it and have made it through. And by living for more than just ourselves, people who know that their lives matter because they're shining a light on other people's lives. And that's why we're here in this church we affirm the goodness of this life and this world. We encourage each other to appreciate this life and our bodies and the world around us. We take in the sunsets. We don't want to wait for another world to come, another life to find joy, to appreciate things. We are a community that says this world matters and we can enjoy this world and we're not burdened by old ideas about sinfulness of the body or sinfulness of this creation. We join in community because that's how we know that we are never alone, especially when it matters the most. It was Dr. Wolf's idea that the church isn't a building, it's the people. It's the people and it's especially the people who've walked through the valley of the shadow of darkness who shine a great light they remind us that we are together and that we will be together. And no matter what we're going through, we'll be okay. And we're a church that puts our values into action because we know that it's our actions for the common good that make the greatest difference and bring out in us the deepest satisfactions. So if you're feeling like hope is dwindling in your own life for whatever reason, just remember that if you find ways to appreciate the everyday beauty, if you remember that you're not alone, feel free to share with others or ask them about their stories of being in places like you're in right now. And third, go out and help somebody. If you do these three things, I promise you there is no way to be hopeless. There is no way to live in despair. Remember, you are the light of the world, and that light will never die. Happy Hanukkah to those who celebrate Hanukkah, remembering the light that didn't die when it mattered most. I love you, and I miss you. Amen. A little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Sing it with me now. This little light. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it 
shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, everywhere I go.